Wow, that was a lot of twiglets, an awful lot of twiglets. Thank you so much for joining us and for sharing your puppies with us, twiglets and others. I'm Danny Gregory. This is Draw With Me. We meet every Thursday and we draw something. And I am joined by JJ. Hello, JJ. Hi. Those twiglets really just, I mean, overload cuteness. And thank you to everyone who sent them. I'm going to treasure these. I'm going to treasure them forever. They're just divine. She's very inspiring. As, tw- as Koja said, twiglet the muse. She is. She's <laughs> amusing and the muse. Bemused as well. Yes, yeah, so that was really nice. It was nice to see. Um, we have had uh, a good week. I hope you have too. Actually, JJ, what were you doing just before we did this? Chasing ducks out of our pool. We have ducks who are just... They're pooping this, in yeah. the pool. Yeah. People this just, is like first world, world problems and also <laughs> hashtag suburbia. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, um, how's your mic? Yeah. Oh, Chris Seidel says low audio for JJ. Well, we all know I'm loud. So, so let's blame the mic. Yeah, I think hopefully in, that's in, about it. Let us, know, let us know if it's a problem. In honesty, we didn't test it because we were running it. Yes. Um, so that is, that's the biggest problem we've had to deal with, so that's not too bad. It's true. You look like a movie star, that's people so are saying. Well, we have a different camera. New camera, new lighting. New lighting, yep. And, so um, I, yeah. So I we, would like to say I, I appreciate these, these compliments because last week, I scolded Nanny for putting a camera that was aimed at the side of my neck. It's like, you know, you know it's all it's it's, it's all about the glamour. That's kind the, to women. Don't shoot things at the neck. <laughs> neck. Yes. Well. Anyway, I look great though too. <laughs> Somebody more, thought more you important. were wearing a bathrobe, or maybe they thought I was wearing a bathrobe. We do sometimes work in our bathrobes. It's the beauty of having a virtual business. I'm not wearing trousers, so that's about as close as I've gotten. All right. On that note. On that note, let's move on to the podcast. So Danny's mic is a little low too. Yeah, but mm-hmm. Danny is a low talker, as, hey, as you know. Uh, excuse me. All right. So um, the Art for All podcast is, continues apace. Yesterday we did a recording all about finding your art style. It's a thing that a lot of people struggle with. What is your style? Do you have the right style? How do you get a style? What if you don't like your style? Where do styles come from? We talked all about that yesterday. So if you'd like to uh, listen to the podcast or watch us do it, you can uh, check it out here on YouTube or wherever you get your fine podcasts. I also want to remind you that if you're wondering, why should I learn to draw? I'm not sure why you've shown up to draw with me, but maybe this is part of your process of discovery. Awesome. Great. Thank you for uh, beginning this exciting adventure. And here's a book called How to Learn to Draw and Why You Should, that you can read that will help you. And it's free. Absolutely free. Have you read this book? No. Never read it? Never read it. So do you know how to learn, why you should learn to draw? You don't know. A a little birdie told me once. No, you don't know. (laughs) I don't have time to read all the books that you write. She doesn't read my books. So she many. doesn't. She doesn't listen to <laughs> my podcast. I did podcast. listen to the podcast yesterday. I did. I you was, did? Yeah. Oh yeah, because you were there when we were there. recording it. Yeah. <laughs> Generally, she doesn't. Though. There are only so many hours in the day, and you we know? live with a triple Virgo. Well, you know they say you can't be a hero to your. There's some expression like you can't be a hero to I don't know people who've seen you walking around <laughs> in your underwear. So yeah. So clearly, that's it. But anyway, the rest of you will no doubt be. Be excited and um, inspired by how to learn to draw and why you should. Get your free copy at sketchbookschool.com. Just go check out sketchbookschool.com. I think we have a few people have. that I've seen in the chat that are uh, brand new, so this is a great place to start. Hmm. It's true. So who, who have you noticed that's new? I saw somebody uh, from India that I didn't recognize the name. Uh-huh. I saw... Uh, well, I saw somebody who said that uh, they weren't brave enough to post their twiglet, so... Mm. Let's, you know, that's a good resource because, you know, posting, sharing is part of it. It's true. Yes. Sharing is part of it. She's new. From Sweden. Fantastic. All right. Danny wrote this book for you. Just for you. There you go. Um, What else? Oh, yes. This is important. Today is Van Gogh's 170th birthday. It's true. Van Gogh is, I'm going to call him Van Gogh, I'm not doing it. Kosha, I'm sorry. Kosha. I'm sorry, but I'm calling him 
Vinnie Van Gogh. The Americanized Vin. Yes. Um, so Van Gogh is kind of very important to us at Sketchbook School because in a lot of ways Van Gogh is kind of on a similar journey to what a lot of us are. He was a self-taught artist by and large and you know he worked on his own and he faced all kinds of frustrations but he kept pushing through and he kept trying and working at it and he uh, you know he changed the world with his art and he also has been a great inspiration. People think of him as the nutty guy who cut his ear off. I think of him as one of the great artists of all time, but also a great example of what you can do if you just keep working at it. And he's, we have a great record of his progress from really not very good stuff to amazing, <laughs> amazing, amazing stuff. And he just did it by doing a lot of it. And he did it by you know, having a few friends who were artists who, tell, who gave him some suggestions. Um, but by and large, he just persevered. So, do you think he would have come to draw with me? No, no doubt. I, I think he would have been, still been probably hung over at this hour. <laughs> <laughs> it's, he would have watched the recording. So, if the next Vince, if the new Vincent Van Gogh is there out there watching, um, we welcome you. And I wanted to say, yesterday, by the way, was our wedding anniversary. It was. We have uh, been married for a long time. Yeah. Um, and. This is a present that I got from JJ for Celebrate. Pretty excited about this. Do you see it? Lego. Lego is, Starry Night. Is Starry, Starry Lego Night. Starry Night. It even has a little tiny Van Gogh there. And it's it's huge. I haven't made it yet, obviously, but it's like the size of this giant box. So I have this incredible version of... Yeah. So, so Danny won't be writing any free books probably for the next 48 hours while he completes this, <laughs> this puzzle. Get it while you have a chance. Get it while there's a lull. <laughs> while I'm, uh... You guys can get some extra sleep in. You can, you know, do some gardening, have a dinner party, because there's just going to be like a mini break. It'll be quiet. It's for... spring break. It'll be it's quiet. It's spring break. Yeah. It's, it's true. School, spring break. It's true. I will be taking off some time. So, yeah, I'm pretty excited, and I think it'll be really cool in the background of your videos. It'll be like a... Yeah, we could put it, like, uh, right there. Yeah, so next, maybe next week when you come to draw with me. <laughs> if you get that thing done, it'll be... Maybe later done. this I, afternoon. Maybe in fact, I'm going to do it while we're doing it. I'm not drawing today. <laughs> I'm going to make it... It's called Lego with me today, Yeah. and we're going to Lego. Lego so, is yes. cool. So this is, uh, this is pretty fun. It is. All it right. is. All right, so what let's get on. Today? Let's get on. So... We talked about, do we do Van Gogh? We've done quite a lot of Van Gogh stuff, so we're not going to do Van Gogh today. Yeah. We're going to do something else that I think is fun, which is, whoops. Something we haven't done in a while. Yeah, I know. Hold on, I have to adjust you because you're upside down there. Okay. Oh. You're not upside down, but, but what we're going to be doing is upside down, and we're going to be drawing, doing a drawing upside down. Let me just come back to me for a minute. So this is an exercise that we have done. We haven't done it for quite a while, but it is, it sounds scary, it's actually not scary, and it's really fun. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a drawing upside down. You don't have to turn upside down, but we are going to draw from an upside down picture, which I'm not going to show you right side up until after we're done. And this is uh, an exercise that I first came across in drawing on the left side of the brain. Is that what it is? Drawing on the right side of the brain. I always get that. <laughs> I can never tell the Betty difference. Edwards. Betty Edwards, amazing classic book, was the, probably the most important book I read when I was first learning to draw. If you haven't read it, please read it. You will love it. Um, but drawing, yes, how she says the last one was Donald Duck. Yes. Oh my gosh, good memory. Yes, that was great. So it's true, and it was over a year ago. Yeah, so we will be doing, um, was it Dollar Bill? Did we do a Dollar Bill upside down? Maybe. I don't remember. No, anyway, it was Donald Duck was the last. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Donald Duck. So, um, so what we're going to do? So, the reason that you do this exercise, just let me explain it a little bit in advance, so that it, is, it isn't just a stunt. It's an opportunity to. One of the things that that inhibits us a lot of times when we draw is we think we know what things look like, and then we draw them, and they turn out not to look like we think they look like because we have a shorthand for so many things. In the, in, when we are looking at things, we have a shorthand in our brain that we think symbolically, we think in terms of symbols. And the reason we think in terms of symbols is because 
our brains would be absolutely overwhelmed by the sheer amount of visual data that's coming in. So what we do is we have these shortcuts. So we look at something and we go, that's a dog, that's a tree, that's a house, that's a cup. And we have shorthand symbols for how we see that. But when we come to draw, that's problematic because we don't want to draw the symbols. We want to draw the actual thing. And if you do a drawing that's a symbol, like I'm sure you've had this experience. You draw an eye. You have a shorthand way of drawing an eye, right? Drawing a nose. And then you put it down and you go, well, that doesn't look like the person I was trying to draw. Because again, you're drawing the symbols rather than drawing the reality. Drawing upside down allows you to kind of trick your brain by saying, you know what? I don't really know what that thing is. What is that line? I can't tell exactly. So I have to focus on the line itself rather than focusing on what I think the line might be. It also allows you to suspend judgment because you say to your inner critic who says, well, that's not very good. That doesn't really look like it. It's yammering away in your brain. You say to it, you know what? I'm drawing upside down. Give me a break. What do you want from me? Let's just try and do this and shut up and we'll talk about it later on. And so then when you turn your picture right side up, I promise you, you will be amazed. It may not be perfect, but it will be amazing and it will be fun, okay? So that is the plan. I just said a lot very quickly, <laughs> but that's thanks to the power of Sketchbook School Coffee. <laughs> All right, let's get on with it. Let's do it. Here we go. So what we're going to draw is this, and I'll tell you more about this as we draw it. But. Um, so this is obviously a drawing by another artist. It's actually a drawing by the legendary Al Hirschfeld. But you don't have to think about that. Don't think about Al Hirschfeld. Don't make comments about Al Hirschfeld until later. Let's just start drawing, drawing this upside down. Now you might say to yourself, where do I even start here? And I'm going to start probably up in this corner. And uh, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to start, I think, here probably. I'm going to come, oops. To see it on my camera. Um, sorry. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of drawing these these lines. They're just relatively simple lines, right? And um, I'm just focusing on one at a time and drawing it. I'm not really thinking about what they are. I don't. I kind of vaguely know what they are, but I'm not really focused on that part of it. So, take your time. I think this is, if that's an important note, is like really s slow down. Yeah, there's no rush. Um, I'll probably rush because, again, <laughs> sketchbook school coffee. But, um, yeah, there's no real. And just, just focus on what does the line look like? What is the line doing? Where is it going? Um, you know, that kind of thing. I'm going to draw each line as I come to it and just take my time. Because and is it Hirschfeld or Hirschfeld? Feld, F-E-L-D, Al Hirschfeld. Um, I'll talk a little bit about Hirschfeld while I do this. So Hirsch, Hirschfeld is, he passed away, but he was an incredible artist who drew for the New York Times for I think over 80 years. Can you imagine? I mean, how old was that? Yeah, he lived to be um, really old. I think, I, I don't know, was it 100? It was, it was close to it. And uh, see, now what I'm doing is I'm looking at the way, at this negative space between this little line here and this line, and I'm arcing down to do it. So Hirschfeld, um, what his job was, it was an interesting job, and I don't think he's ever been replaced, but he was basically the illustrator for the theater section of the paper. And so he would go to the theater, generally on uh, opening night, and he would sit in the audience with a sketchbook on his pad, on his lap, and he would draw the production. He would do whatever, and he was an incredible caricaturist, and he was also a master of economy. So his lines... He drew, I mean, there were just no more lines than needed, uh, and that's why he's so interesting to study because he, you know, he there's just there's just the bare minimum of lines, and yet he was able to capture a likeness by being so economical, you know, and just saying like, what are the things that make this person look like this, you know, and um, it's 
And a lot of the drawings that he did were published in the paper the next day. So he would be at the theater drawing, imagine, in the semi-dark, right? Because he's drawing, he didn't, you know, he's just drawing on his lap in the darkness, surrounded by other theater goers, and uh, making these beautiful things. I think I think he might like go back to the newspaper office and do some stuff, you know, some final tweaking perhaps, but it was all done and in the paper the next morning. And uh, for 80 years? For 80 years. I think he worked, did some other il kinds of illustration, but there's a documentary about him called the Lion King. Not lion, but Lion King. Because he was really the king of lines. I mean, I mean look at even his signature. So that's, here's another thing about his signature, because the signature is a, an important part of Hirschfeld. So, because he had this... I mean, I remember as a teenager, we used to we used to do our own versions of our, our signatures based on him, because <laughs> it was his style, so you could do your own name like that. And uh, you should try it. Do your version of it. So I'm not going to do... His, but I'm going to do mine, and I'm going to try doing it upside down and see if I can do it. Um, but another thing about Hirschfeld is he had a daughter named Nina, and what he would do is he would hide the name Nina in his drawings. So there would be like lines in, like say, somebody's hair or something like that, and it would spell out Nina, and then he would put a number right underneath his signature, right down here, there would be a number, and that would be the number of Ninas that there were in the drawing. And he would do that so that his daughter, when she was a little girl, she could go and see the art, see the uh, drawing in the paper and go and look for her name and count how many times her name was hidden. So like here, where I'm doing these... Um, these things I can't see his stuff really closely enough, but I bet you anything, there's Nina's hidden here, in these lines. This is like a seems like a pretty good place for Nina's, so or it might be in like hair. Yeah, except it isn't hair, right? Because we're not we're not identifying what these things are, because that's oh, part sorry. right. That's part of the point of, of this whole thing, is to avoid saying, well, that's the hair, and that's the bow tie, and that's this and that. Try to avoid doing that. Just say, I'm drawing this shape. It goes up. It goes across, it goes down, and then it goes back, and then it goes up, and then it comes across, and then it does this, and then it intersects that line. So I've done that, and then there's this little squiggly line here that I'm copying, and then there's another line right above this that goes... So you're having this kind of a conversation with yourself, and that makes it um, a really different drawing experience rather than saying, like, well, I don't know how to draw chins. Well, it's like, okay, so don't draw a chin draw this line that goes like this, and then it sweeps back here. Another thing that's interesting about him also is notice the weight of the lines. I'm drawing this all basically with the same kind of pen, and it's not a very flexible pen, but he has a lot of line variation, weight variation in, his, in these lines. And you think that's because of the pen that he was using? I think, I think he was, yes. I don't know what kind of pen he was using at this point, a lot of this looks like it was drawn with a brush, and I wonder if that's. I mean, it's I mean, it's hard to imagine. Could have been a fountain pen could do that, right? Yeah, 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 absolutely. I mean, I think um, if you imagine sitting in the dark of a theater with a bottle of ink and a brush, it's probably not a great idea. So yeah, a fountain pen probably makes more sense. But who knows? I don't. I bet we could find out. Yeah, I bet we could find out. I think I'm sure I've, I've never seen The Lion King. But I what? Bet, I know, I haven't. All right, I guess we're, we know what we're doing tonight. Yeah. So. We were having a little conversation in the schoolyard about pens. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was interesting. I mean, a lot of people voting for fountain pens. I think. Drawing fountain pens, yeah. Well, it was like, you know, what's the essential pen to have in your bag, right? Your go to pen mm -hmm. that you always have. I said the Uniball, just roller pen. That's because I don't take things very seriously. Um, and I like a uniball pen, a roller pen, just for like taking notes in my sketchbook. Like, not just for drawing, but I, I actually think it's a great pen. And that was the pen that I used for years. That's how I started, was the uniball. And I think that's probably why it's what I use, because yeah. you told me, like, start here. It's not intimidating. And 
you know, they're cheap, right? It's like you blow through one, you leave it on the park bench. It's I used to use them shakes. because they were free because I would steal them from the, from the office. From the <laughs> office. <laughs> yes, right. They're a co- very common office pen. Um, but yeah, what would you say is your favorite pen these days? I mean, I guess you can't really say favorite because you do use so many different pens, but... I've been using a brush pen a lot. Um, right now I'm using, this is a just a Micron. And, but this is an 08. It's quite fat. Yeah, see, I like a thin... Nib. Yeah, well, I'm using a th- fat one because I knew that these lines were going to be pretty fat, you know. And I think now I look and I say, you know, this outside line that he did, it's so sweeping and smooth, you know, and that would be nice with a big fat pen. Um, but being a bit hesitant, and also now these these shape these shapes I want to color in, I guess. I'm not going to get. It's hard to do this when you're talking. I'm giving you credit. Thank you. Um, yeah, so. I guess color these in just because they are colored in. So. Yeah, you could definitely use an easier pen for that. Yeah, this is not. I can already feel my hand is cramping a little <laughs> bit. I had to do something yesterday where I was writing a lot of handwriting, cursive. My hand cramped after, I don't know, like 30 seconds. It was ridiculous. You're not writing enough. I know. So you see how this line, like it's fat and then it gets thin. So, all right, I, I'm done. I'm, I've covered the whole, I've drawn everything that I saw there, I think. And now, now the moment. Are you ready? Da, 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 da. All right, well, first let's, should we show him right side up? Identified the Nina. Yeah, where's the Poutonier? See, there's no number down here which suggests that maybe there weren't any Ninas. But yes, the Boutonier would be a, a good place for it. So this is is Gershwin. And uh, yeah, this is nice. So all right, let's see what mine looks like right side up. You know, not bad. I mean, my lines are a bit squiggly in different places. Yeah, you didn't fill in the bow tie. No, oh, you're right. Didn't fill in the bow tie. Let me do it the easy way with a brush pen. <laughs> cheating. Cheating is totally permissible. Cheating is cheating is fine. We always say, do just have fun. All right. So. All right. I mean. Yeah. I look. didn't. I didn't miss anything. I mean, so how long did that take? It was like. Yeah, a minute. Short and sweet. So yeah. So there's there's a uh, there he is. Are you ready? Should we do another one? You did great, babe. Yeah, let's let's go for it. Now you're warmed up. I'm warmed up. All right. Toss that aside. Rick says, I had some nice gestures happen I normally wouldn't have captured. See? See? Yeah. yeah. So you've been thinking. All right. So here's, let's do this. Let's do this one. So... It's interesting also to think about, like, how, what did he probably do when he drew this? Did he draw the big sweeping things first? Did he, did he do his big lines first? He might have. I'm not going to, though. I'm just going to do... I mean, what is your approach? Do you kind of go from top to bottom? Yeah, is that yeah. Sort of I, yeah, just... I'm, not, I'm, I'm not trying to be... Um, I'm not really... Yeah, I'm just, I'm just doing it this way. So, I... <laughs> I, I mean, I usually, Articulate much? I, it's difficult to talk and draw at the same time. I know, I know. So I can't really read what this says, so I'm not going to read it. I'm just It just looks kind of like a bunch of random lines. So I think that's an important thing is to say, you know, I'm not going to make, just because it is a word that says something, I don't, if I don't really see that, I'm not going to deal with it. I'm just going to... Um, Greek it out. Greek it out, man. So, you know, in a way, I mean, this, we have a little bit of an advantage in what we're doing today because it's already a drawing, right? So it's already a drawing, which means that Hirschfeld has worked out a lot of the things for us by saying, okay, this would be this, 
this would this is how you would depict this you know in some in some degrees that's what happens when you draw from a photograph too the photographer has made decisions for you when you're drawing just from observation not so much I mean, it's kind of loosely analogous to playing from sheet music wouldn't you say uh yeah i guess so i mean you can still express so, yourself yeah, when still, you exactly but you've got a roadmap right um as opposed to if you were just improvising or even improvising on a theme or improv or playing from memory or various other things I don't know, I'm not, i've never played music i don't know what i'm talking about but still i think it's a similar thing but there is a roadmap so so we can just copy it go i mean obviously this would be an impossible thing to do from observation because you're not her show. no because i <laughs> because it's because the thing i'm drawing isn't upside down uh, well that too yeah. right so <laughs> so it wouldn't be um it unless wouldn't you're be. drawing a, a sloth a sloth that's true yeah or if you yourself are hanging upside down which i guess you could do yeah. now you could use some kind of an optical aid like I've seen, um, I've seen ma things that look like magnifying glasses, but in fact they they flip things upside down. So that would be a way of doing it. And that sounds like a really fast train to a migraine. <laughs> well, again, it's it's that it would only be a headache if your brain was constantly trying to fix it, right? So I'm sure you've had that experience where you where you're like say you're lying on the couch on your side and you're watching TV. Your brain doesn't show you the TV sideways um, because your brain c corrects for it. It knows that you are, you know. I mean, they say that, that babies even maybe see upside down at first and it takes a while for your brain to correct. There's something about, I don't know, I just have a vague sense of what I'm about to say, so if I'm wrong, either ignore it or correct me. But I think our brains, our, our eyes flip upside down what we're seeing. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, that's bold. I mean, I do. Like, in other words, I the light comes in. Of the, the retina. Yeah, your lens flips it, and then your brain recorrects it. Right, it's like a camera. Right, so... so um, you know, so that's part of the act of what we're doing here is like you're trying to tell your brain, don't fix this. Don't try and turn it upside down. Keep it upside down. I mean, don't try and turn it right side up. And uh, anyway, um, but these glasses, the these sort of lenses that I was talking about, artists will use them also as kind of reverse magnifying glasses. So they will um, show you what you, you can stand quite close to something look through this and it will make it um, small is that clear sort of. so in other words it's like rather than like a magnifying glass which moves you in this gives you a wider perspective on something right and the way that you use it is if you're a painter you can stand close to your painting so you can reach it but you can also see the whole painting at once by looking through the mag the reducing glass trying to do this while drawing so it's kind of so there's I have to say also a lot of times when you're doing this your brain will suddenly say you're you're ruining it this is completely wrong it's terrible what you're doing you totally didn't get that right and then you turn it right side up and you're like oh I did actually it was fine so <laughs> So don't trust yourself. Just trust yourself. See where it goes. It might it might actually turn out way better than you thought. Well, it's just another way to practice. It's another way to get out of your head. Yeah, and make it fun. Have an adventure. Try something totally different and weird. That is often the funnest part of doing this. Is, is the kind of the games that you can play with yourself.
This also makes you really make sure you get every line in there. Like you won't skip over things as easily when you're doing it this way. It could be an interesting thing to do is to do a drawing yourself of whatever and then turn it upside down and redraw it. Oh, your using, own drawing. Yeah, use your own technique. That's very meta. Well, you're, it will give you a fresh perspective on what you drew. And you might end up liking your lines better or you might get a kind of a wonkiness that you think or is like really Or like Rick cool. said, you capture some, get an expression you didn't do when you were concentrating on its likeness rather than yeah. on what you were seeing. Yeah, exactly. You're, you're, you're focusing on drawing what really is there. That's, that's so much of what we're trying to do is to, is to draw what's really there as opposed to whatever shortcut version of it our brain makes. I mean, think about our poor brain. You know how much data is coming into your brain all the time and how little of it we can really pay attention to? If you think about it... You know, we're, we're kind of nicely coming back to your free ebook that I didn't read. <laughs> how do you know? You haven't read it. Because <laughs> my brain is taking in so much information. I cannot... There you go. ...process it all, right. Annie exactly. Gregory. So, yeah, so you're... Um, Yeah, the brain in a mysterious place. But think about, like, say you are... Have you ever had this experience, like, you go somewhere... I remember thinking about this at a, at a football game. Going to a football game, and it was when I was in college, and, they, and I was looking for a friend of mine, and who I knew was somewhere there, and they were, like, I don't know, 30, 40, 50,000 pieces, uh, people in this stadium, and I identified my friend across the stadium... I was like, oh, there he is. Weird. And I thought about that later on. I was like, God, like, how was I able, how was my brain able to look at this huge amount of information and figure out that little tiny thing was his face? You know? Turned out it wasn't him. No, it wasn't actually him. He was like, I never went to that game. What are you talking about? Yeah, so. All right. I feel like I always run into people at airports. Kind of the same thing, where you're like, wow, there are an awful lot of people here, and I just found somebody that I know. It's very strange. Yeah, that's kind of the same idea. Well, you like see them across a crowded terminal. Yeah, yeah. Well, you see somebody out of context, yeah. I think about, like, you see a celebrity, you know? We were just talking about this the other day. Yeah, you see. You sometimes will, especially if you live in New York City or in Los Angeles, you see them in the wild. And it takes a minute because you think it's somebody, you know, you have this moment of panic, like, oh my God, I should say hello, but I can't remember how I know this person or what's this person. I know I know them. I mean, it happened to me in the West Village, walking up to a Starbucks, probably juggling my phone, late to whatever, and a nice gentleman was holding the door open for me from like halfway down the block and I could see him and I was thinking, I can't remember guy's name and he's he clearly knows me and i'm just so rude and uh it was philip seymour hoffman <laughs> so thankfully i didn't say anything because i don't in fact know him all right so this is is this a drawing of philip seymour hoffman no it's not <laughs> it's actually it is actually the artist himself this is hirschfeld he was no he was famous for whoops wait are you done yeah whoa he How was famous happen? he was famous for his beard He was also, he also, these, the way he did these hands, he would often do folded arms. I remember copying that when I was in high school, the way he would cop, do these hands. So yeah, good, hands so graceful, great. right? And also like the weight of lines, like the, the, um, the sweep of his shoulders, the darkness of the eyes, the kind of the eyebrows, all these different line weights, really beautiful. All right, let's, let's see what happens with mine. I'm really nervous about this one. I think it was looking pretty good. I cannot believe how quickly you did it. I bet. It's reasonable. It's reasonable. This hand is a little bit weird. But yeah, I mean, it sort of comes out to be a likeness, right? Because again, how do you do a likeness? You just draw all the things like they are. So, yeah, I kind of like that. I mean, I hope people are having that same aha fresh feeling I mean, that aha really? fresh feeling well isn't that i mean really it's like yes yeah. you can i know it's just it, that that's the fun thing is you look and you go like did i just do that right you're like 
How did I just do that? Exactly. Better than you thought you were. Catherine says, I'm finding this more of a challenge than working from an upside down photograph. I think that's because I'm dealing with both shapes and Hirschfeld style. Okay, here's the answer to that. Don't think about Hirschfeld's style. That's not what you're drawing. You're drawing one line, the line next to it, the line next to it. You're not thinking about Hirschfeld. You're not thinking about his style. You're just drawing a series of lines. That's It's really critical that you get to that point and just say... Yeah, uh, what is the shape I'm seeing? Just what are these shapes? And then it turns out, guess what? It's Hirschfeld! It's Hirschfeld. <laughs> oh, guess what? Yeah. So don't... Try and, try and get your brain to not do the, the thing that it wants to Oh, I love this comment from Monica. I usually avoid hands entirely, but mine are good. Yay! <laughs> That's interesting, right? Well, it's partly because he has a way of, of doing... Uh, of drawing hands that is fun, and it's just kind of simplified. Yeah. But also you see things like... Things I hadn't noticed when I was drawing it, which is... Like, you see down here how his hand is kind of wrapping around the elbow, just like it would... Yeah. But it's really this line is continuing that. And I, when I was doing it, I didn't know it. But then when you look at the original up here, you see the same thing, right? I, I mean, I didn't make that up. He, that's what he did. Yeah. Um, and then there are things like this where it's a sort of an elegant shape, but it's, it's actually poetic. the cuff. It's a poetic hand. It's the cuff, yeah. Yeah. So those are all interesting. That's not the cuff. Yeah, that's the cuff. His hand is disappearing into the sleeve. Not the cuff, but the sleeve. Oh, I see. yes, yes. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think the eyes are the part that I, and I think I was just, I think I was talking when I did that part, so, um, yeah. Amazing. So that was a fun thing. I, do do we, we have time to do one? I yeah, think, we have time. We do? Okay. Let's do this. Okay. You are really caffeinated today. <laughs> <laughs> well, you all have to keep up with me, so I hope that you're, but again, if you just Google Hirschfeld and you'll see. Uh, his art, you can find a lot of it out there. All right. Yeah, because he was creating for 80 plus years. Yeah, there's a lot. I think I'm going sideways. So you might want to turn your page, maybe, because this is a different shape. And, okay. How cool is that? You know, I'd kind of like to be, I mean, I'm sure he just, do, he went like, <whistles> like that. I bet you he did that shape, <whistles> that line. And then he did this line. I mean, that looks like it's one sweeping stroke. But he might have done it like several times, right? Can you imagine him sitting there and he did the, like Maybe. ten times before he got one that he liked? Maybe. I mean, I it's think. so clean that it's hard to believe, but he might have redrawn it. Yeah, maybe you're right. Yeah, I'd like to loosen up. I'm, I'm going to try and do it. I'm going to try and go fast. Whoa. Yeah. Let's try it. Let's see what happens. I'm still starting in this upper right hand corner, left hand corner, but I'm going to move faster, just so I can get some of this sinuous quality that these things have. Yeah, all right, I already screwed it up, so <laughs> it's fine. Um, but, you know, it's hard, I mean, big sweeping lines, you kind of have to sweep. You have to move. Commit. You have to draw almost from the elbow, or even possibly from the shoulder. You know, so rather than just moving your wrist or your fingers, you might want to try moving your your body at large. Not sure how I'm gonna how much I'm gonna get into these the tone here. I mean, I may just. Yeah, I feel like if you I don't know if wanted to get out a different implement, I mean, I think otherwise you're going to yeah. be... Yeah, that's true. Spend a lot more than... I mean, we have 15 minutes. Yeah. So... You know, it's like we were talking about this in the podcast yesterday about copying another artist's work and how... In some ways, you are becoming them. You're seeing as they saw. It's like a little time machine where you're kind of transferred into their body. At this moment, you're seeing and making lines that are the lines that they made. It's a, it's a pretty cool thing. It's like a, a recreation of the experience of doing this drawing. That's something to think about is that you come away from it having put on 
It's like a player piano. You know, they have those player pianos that can record a specific pianist's interpretation of um, of how they played it. It's recording exactly how hard they hit each key, how long they held each note. And uh, this is, in some ways, that kind of that experience. I feel like I'm a 90-year-old man sitting in the dark. Can you hear my stomach? I wasn't sure it was a you or a toilet. Yeah, it's my stomach. Because we had an awfully fine dinner last night. It's true. So now, you know when you have like a really great big dinner and you wake up so hungry? Yeah, why is that? Is it you, your stomach Maybe is like... They, they say you like stretched out your stomach? I don't know. I mean, we had oysters oh with... Oh my gosh, with my stomach just growled. <laughs> sympathetic. <laughs> we had oysters with... Um, Steak tartare. steak tartare in them. On top of the it was kind raw of oyster in its yeah. shell. It was a of dollop of a steak tartare. Yeah. And it had a little it was bit of it, it grated was, fresh water, coarse radish. It was real delight. It was, it was something I've never seen on a menu before, so I had to know of it. And it was excellent. Right, I'm taking some risks here. You can hear that pen making noises too. Yeah, this is, I think should have gone like that. It's easy to get lost. I'm a little lost now. Where was I? Here, okay. Are you successfully not naming things? You know, are you not saying this is this the or that? The glasses and the earring and the hair. This, this is the, the tail. This is the cell phone over here. I can see the satellite dish here. Oh my God, it's... <laughs> I mean, I've never really drawn an aircraft carrier before. You know, could you trick yourself into really not knowing what this is? And uh, maybe you don't know what it is. Maybe you still don't know what each of these individual things are because he's abstracted them in a lot of ways. And also when you're doing, like you see how I'm just, I'm kind of moving quickly and doing this hatching, but are you able to do the hatching at least in the directions that he's doing it? So you're not just doing a bunch of scribbling, but you're actually trying to emulate his line directions, if not, because I'm not even sure how he's, how he made some of this. Maybe it was like with a very fine ballpoint pen or something. Again, fountain pen would be my guess. Well, I don't know. I wouldn't say this is a fountain pen. It's very, very fine, and it does. And it doesn't look like it's wet or it's bleeding into each other. It looks like these yeah, are individual it really looks lines. Like checkerboards on some of them. Yeah, it's like really individual lines that are holding that, and that would be. So I don't know, but it's interesting just to think about it as lines. You know, just think about what. Uh, now, what's the direction of each of these lines? Not what is its meaning, what is its purpose, but just what does it look like? And it's a really good exercise for when you're not drawing upside down and you're not copying somebody else's work, is to really think, because really you can draw anything this way. You can reduce anything to its component parts. So you can look at anything and go, that's a uh, you know, short line, That's an in that line is intersecting it at this angle, now here's this line that is, you know, make, composed of dots, or here's a, an organic rounded shape. Let me look at that. You know, so you can do really anything can be drawn in this with this approach. Which is, you know, 
from observation, just like what is each, what are each of these things, line-wise, not meaning-wise. All right, I have, I don't know how successful this has been. We have a bit more time. Are you done? Close to it, yeah. I, mean, I can put more cross hatching. I don't know if that's going to be terribly helpful. This line go back here. Yeah. I think I have all the lines down. Again, I could spend a lot more time. Maybe I'll spend a little bit of time here on this hatching here. That's that's it. I'm done. Done-ish. Okay. Are you ready for the re the big reveal? Ready. Whoa, that's big. Maybe it's more. All right. So there it is. It's Ella Fitzgerald. It's a great drawing. I mean, almost as great as yeah. she is. Yeah. That is pretty cool. But if you want to see a really cool one. I mean. I mean, I mean it, it ain't Hirschfeld, but. <laughs> I mean, it I does think. El, it does Ella some justice. I mean, I think it's like this line was more sweeping. And. I think it's cool. I think it's good. I think, I think this good. whole business in here with what has turned out to be her eye was connected. It to this. I mean, it's it's legitimate to go back in and do some little corrections if you want to. You know, you can do that. I think it's... Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think you could maybe use that uh, brush marker again for that thick line where you maybe made um, this? a series of lines where there was meant to be one line. Just give it a thick line there. I think it looks amazing. And then... Herschel would approve of, have approved of this. Now Holly Rose is going to go do some digging about Owl's tools. Oh, look at you. Presto Changeo. Presto Changeo. Presto. Shwing. That thing is called Presto, right? It is called Presto. Did you show it? Did you show the Presto? Presto. The jumbo correction pen. <laughs> Ding. Yeah. There we have it. All right, that was fun. All right. I think we should go have a second breakfast. What do you think? Kathy asked a very good question. Should we post right side up? Interesting. Yeah, I think let's post right side up. Let's yeah share it post upside yeah, right side up. See the payoff. Yeah, because because we want to see. I mean, the point is. It was made upside down, but ultimately it's revealed. So, yeah. That's a great question, though. Crow quill pen, says Jen. Okay. Crow quill pen. So he did take a bottle of ink with him. So crow quill, if you don't know, is a very fine dip pen. Fine, fine dip pen. But uh, maybe, he had a, maybe he had a lot of different... Uh, maybe he had a few different nibs. Yeah. Holly says he must have used different nibs. Yeah. But I think... I mean, I'm sure... Because because he started drawing in the twenties, uh, I'm almost certain he used India ink, and he probably didn't use ballpoint pen. <laughs> Might have used a ballpoint pen. Could have. When was a ballpoint pen? Uh, ballpoint came out in the twenties um, or thirties. Yes, yeah, so could have, but yeah. So, oh, post all three or just pick one. Up to you. Yeah. Up to you. I mean, I would say... There's no wrong answer. I would say it would be cool if everybody had the the Gershwin, if that was the first one that you did, but post whichever way you want. The idea of posting is in part so that we find it, but also sh share it with the world and say, hey, here's cool stuff. Because I bet you, you're, I bet you, your um, drawings will be pretty cool and people will like them. 
Do it all week. How yeah. about that for a challenge? Do it all week. So when we, you mean, keep when doing we reconvene it? next week at uh, Draw With Me, we can want to hear about all the fun you've had. Walter says that he finished the second one at the same time as I did. That's awesome. <laughs> Go what Walter. kind of what kind of coffee are you drinking, Walter? Because, uh, yeah. And is it making your tummy rumble? And the thing is, look, there's a finite number of lines. I bet you could go in and count how many lines there are in that. Let's say there's like 200 lines. It doesn't necessarily have to take a huge amount of time. Just work your way through it, you know, and uh, and catch it. So, um, yes, well, that was fun. That was great. And that's about it. So what else do we have to say to people before we leave? Not much. Uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks for... The memories. Thanks for the memories. Thanks for drawing upside down with me today. Um, let's see. Uh, hashtag SBS Draw with me. That's share it on um, share it on social media. Put it on Facebook. Put it on Instagram. We'll track it down and we'll find it. And we will. Hey, look, JJ's upside down. What's up with that? Draw me. Draw it. Draw it. Upside it. down. There you go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I want, to, I want to be upside down, too. There we go. So, anyway. Somebody commented on how tan you're looking. I think when... And we, are high sitting, blood we are sitting right next to each other. I think when anyone is sitting next to me, they look they appear extra tan. It's true. She's like a reflector. <laughs> Wear extra sunscreen when you're in my vicinity. Mm-hmm. I will reflect the Pacific Ocean. Well, I'm glad that you have a new camera. Yeah, and, thank uh, you for the new lighting. Yes. I do appreciate it. Um, so anyway, so Art for All podcast, we're, I think we're not going to record live next week. We're going to just record it and put it up there, but we will share the visual recording. Um, who was the second drawing? The second drawing was Al Hirschfeld, the artist. It was self-portrait. Third one was Ella Fitzgerald. So, um, dannysessays.com. That's my weekly essay. Again, it's free. It's free. It's free and it's you get, a, and it's, you get Danny in your mailbox. It's free like and every I, Friday. What a better way to start the weekend. It's free and I hope that I don't sound immodest, but I think it's worth it. <laughs> um, yes, and I'm doing this new thing where I read my essays on YouTube every Monday. So if you really can't be bothered to read what I wrote, you can come and watch me read it to you. You can hear it. We once time said we were going to trademark your voice. What was it? it? Was like screeching, tone, screeching, calming voice. screeching moan. Yes. Um, so yeah, Danny's Essays Subscribe to this channel. Why? So that then you'll be reminded of all the various things. Basically, on Monday I do a live reading. Tuesday I send out um, like, a paid essay. Know, this is just gonna... Wednesday we do the podcast. Thursday we do draw with me. Friday, I do um, an, essay. an essay. Saturday, I lie in a stupor by the pool with a beer in my hand. Sunday, only. I'm still lying by the pool. And uh, Monday, we do it all over I again. think it bears mentioning, if you're a Spark member this Saturday, we have a very cool special event. Ah, Marge Minor says, or Madge R. Minor, Madge R. Minor says she, he had just had a photo of pizza and chicken, but I didn't put a photo on Okay, now I'm really media. hungry. Let's go. Why not? Yeah, exactly. Mange. Mange. Mange tout. Um, Prathana. 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 Is all of his work in black and white? Um, Al Hirschfeld? I think so. The vast majority of it. He did do some stuff, I think, for Vanity Fair that was color occasionally. But he's a master of black and white. And he came up in a time, of course, when he worked in a newspaper. So, you know, newspapers didn't used to have any color in them. So that's really what his thing was. Um, my biggest problem, says Ross, was being satisfied with the effect of a minimum number of lines. Well, that's the thing about Herschel. His lines are so judiciously used, so economically used, that every line is perfect. And I think that's the thing that we want to get to as we're drawing, is we want to get to a stage where we are using as few lines as possible. Or no, That's not true. Use as many lines as you want, but make your lines confident. His lines are super confident. And that's really where you want to get to a point where you're not doing 10 lines when one would work. It's kind of like with writing or speaking. If you use the right word, you don't need to use a lot of adjectives. That's, but that's a subject for another day. As we ramble on. 
will the podcast be live on Wednesday? No, it won't be. We're not doing it live anymore. We did it live three times. And it was an experiment. It was an experiment. And uh, that was, we're done with that. But we will be sharing the recording of us doing it live. Yes. But we won't, it's, it, honestly, it was dealing. Podcasts are meant to be a listening experience. There's that. But also, no, it was a lot to, it was a lot, it was difficult to have a serious conversation while dealing with all the technical things involved. So, yeah. we're done. All right, it's 10 o'clock. Onward to the rest of our week. Yeah. See you again eventually somewhere. <laughs> Thank you. Monday, for, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Fridays, you know, Saturday, And Sunday. if you're sick of me, take the weekend off. <laughs> See you again. I get sick of me too. Bye. Bye. Um,